there, it's Jo from Minerva. Today I'm going to do a sew along of the Dawn Jeans by Megan Nielsen. Jeans making is quite an epic journey and um, you don't often do it all in one go so it's a good idea if you're thinking about making jeans to allow plenty of time and to think of it as lots of chapters in a book. If you can split up the parts of sewing and the process then you can really enjoy each part of the process and do each part carefully. The thing that people worry about the most when they make jeans is that they're going to put all that effort in and then they won't fit. So it's really important that when you get the Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans pattern that you check the finished garment measurements. So don't just choose your size, your UK size or US size. Don't worry about the women's size. Actually measure yourself because you want these jeans to fit yourself. If you measure yourself at the hip, waist and crotch and you find you're across sizes, then you need to grade between sizes. So if you've got a bigger hip, so say your hip size lands in size 14 and your waist lands in size 12, then you need to make sure that you've still got the hip room for size 14 and then you grade the pattern gently out to the waist. There will always be fitting along the way with jeans, so it's a good idea to be trying on all of the time. The Dawn jeans is a high-waisted jeans pattern. It has a pocket and a coin pocket, back pockets. You could make a zip fly or a button fly. There are also different leg options on this pattern. So you can have a straight leg, a tapered leg or a wide leg. I'm making the wide leg trousers today. Um, I have got the stuff to make a zip fly, but I'm actually going to have a go at a button fly because I've never done it before. The pattern goes from a zero to a size 20 which is a waist 25 and 5 8 inches up to a 39 and 3 8 inches for the waist and for a hip it's a 34 and 5 8 inches for the hip and a 48 and 3 8 inches for the hip on size 20. Obviously there's all the sizes in between. This pattern is a rigid jeans pattern so you're looking for a fabric that doesn't have any stretch now, if it's your first pair of jeans, then you might like the comfort of having a little bit of stretch so that it helps you with your fitting. But you do need to be careful because if you've got jeans with a stretch and you're making a woven pattern, then you will have slight variations in your finished garment measurements. The fabric I'm using today is a Minerva Core range denim. This one is quite a dark colour because I'm making the wide leg button fly jeans and I wanted to have that sort of vintage look. So I've got a dark denim. It's got a really stable straight grain and a really stable cross grain. So there's not a lot of give um, across the hips and the thighs. So I needed to make sure that I've got the right size and I've cut the right size. There's other bits of kit for making jeans and they are all listed below. And uh, there's all the things that make them really authentic. So the jeans buttons, the little jeans studs, some top stitching thread, which I'll show you how to use in the video today and um, some needles so really treat yourself to the right needles to make jeans they will make your jeans look so much more authentic i normally show my cutting out as a speed along collage but it's so important and crucial to make sure that you get all of the pieces cut out correctly that today it's quite a big explanation of how to cut out all of the pieces so bear with but you cannot change cutting out you can unpick a seam if it's not right you can unpick your pocket and move it you can change lots of things, but if you don't cut the fabric on the grain, then your jeans will be really twisted and out of shape. Before you cut your fabric, you need to pre-wash your, your jean fabric because um, it's a rigid pattern, so you're not going to have a lot of give. So if you make a perfectly beautiful pair of jeans and then you try them on and you wear them once, as soon as you wash them for the first time, they will shrink and then all of that hard work has gone to waste. So you need to pre-wash your fabric and press it, find the... Uh, straight grain and make sure that all your pattern pieces are pressed out as well so you want to be cutting out the fabric and the pieces without lots of sort of fold lines in it because every millimeter counts when you're making jeans so let's head over to the cutting table and check out how we cut out the dawn jeans i'm cutting out my dawn jeans now and i have folded the fabric and matched the selvage edges so I have a straight grain running straight down my fabric and that's a really stable part of the fabric and it's really important when you cut jeans that you concentrate on this grain line because otherwise your jeans will fall out of shape. So 
pieces like this look a little bit at a funny angle, but the grain line is parallel to the selvage. So that grain line is running parallel to this selvage edge. So I pin this first and then I smooth the pattern piece out from that grain line. I have the yoke here that has a grain line and that grain line is parallel to the selvage. So that grain is straight. I can't just twist that because then the back yoke of my jeans won't be stable. I have a slightly shorter crotch length than the pattern suggests. So I want to take a centimeter out of the crotch length so I don't get a sort of bubble just below my zip. I can't take it out above the zip here because then my zip length would be wrong. My fly and fly extension would be wrong. So here's the notch for the zip. So I've taken out one centimetre just below the zip and trued out the seam line with some chalk. And because I've taken one centimetre out of the crotch, then I've added one centimetre to the hem. I've got quite small feet, so I'm taking a, a little bit of width out of the trouser. So this is the back trouser piece and I've just folded out the lower leg. I've kept the notches not too disturbed, just a half a centimetre disturbed on those. And I've made sure that I've still got the thigh width and I haven't changed that. So I've only taken some width out of the lower leg and I have just done the same on the front leg, but only very marginally. So my trousers won't bow out at the bottom, they'll be a very straight cut. It's pretty crucial that you make sure that the waistband is cut on the straight grain. So remember the straight grain is running here because my fold is this side and my selvage is this side. So I've got the straight grain running here. Just gonna double check it. This just needs to twist that way a little bit because a straight grain on your waistband means that your waistband won't stretch out. And you don't want to wear your jeans after the first wear, they go all baggy around the waist. So that's better. There's one change I'm making. Um, I am cutting my waistband in two pieces and then I'm going to have a join. So I need to add 1.5 seam allowance so that I have a join at the centre back of my waistband. And I'm doing this because I always have to do a sway back adjustment. So I know that I'm going to be changing the angle of the yoke. So rather than making it tricky to fit a straight piece of waistband onto a yoke that I've adjusted, I'm going to have a split in the back of my waistband. It will be covered by the belt loop anyway, but that will make it more manageable for me to fit my waistband around my waist. The waistband isn't exactly the same because there's an underlap on the end. So um, when I cut this shape out, I will make one piece shorter than the other to allow for the underlap. One of the most fun parts of making your own jeans is choosing your pocket lining. And so I've got a little piece of art gallery fabric left over from a shirt that I made. And that means that I can cut two pocket bags to go on the inside of my jeans. And the reason I've chose that is because I am using a rust colored top stitching thread. And these are the pockets that I've already been working on. I've cut two pockets and I've done some sashiko stitching on both of those ready to go on the back. belt loop 
needs to be on the straight grain so this is the stable grain of fabric not the stretch it looks a little bit of ease across the cross grain so this needs to be on the straight grain there are also some pieces to cut out in one layer only so this is for pieces that only require one to be cut out, not two on the fold. I keep my piece, little pieces like this for patching jeans. So I just tidy them up and they go into my patch box. I love this stuff it's a uh, carbon paper so I can get really accurate markings for my buttonhole and placement so I know exactly where to put my buttonholes you can also use a chalk pencil or tailor's tacks. You need to add interfacing to the wrong side of the button fly. So that's the one you've marked the buttonholes on. On the reverse, you need to cut a piece of interfacing. The rest of my fly pieces are ready. A coin pocket, belt loops, waistband, pockets, and the backs, and the fronts, and the yokes, and the pocket facings, and you're all cut out. I normally follow a pattern in a sew along absolutely in order of the pattern but because I'm thinking in my mind about chapters and grouping the processes of making jeans then you will find that I'm I'm moving around the patterns I'm doing everything to do with the fly I'm doing everything to do with pockets I'm doing everything to do with the yoke I'm doing everything to do with the belt loops so it does leap around the pattern a little bit but if you're making jeans and you just want to check out one little part of the process that you're not sure of it's quite a good way of finding out what you need to know there is a little bit of prep work to start in your jeans, so you need to stay stitch around the uh, waistline of some of the pocket pieces and some of the waist pieces. So make sure you do that first before you get stuck into the instructions. We're going to look at the components and the parts that make up the button fly. These are the three parts of the button fly. So there's the button fly. That's the bit that has the buttons marked on it, the fly extension. That's the bit behind and a button fly and that bit also goes behind. This bit's a single layer and these are double. Let's see how we put them together. Take your right front as if you were wearing it. So this is the crotch. So you would hold that up so that this would cover your right thigh and put the fly extension on top of the trouser piece. You're going to sew six mil from the edge matching up the crotch markings and then you can snip six mil into the seam allowance so that the crotch and the extension can move independently of each other. Next you're going to do a two mil edge stitch along the edge of here, press it open so you don't make a little bubble or anything and tie your threads at the back rather than back tacking. On the left back piece you're going to put the fly, that's the single layer of fabric against the raw edge, matching up the crotch notch and the raw edges at the top. You're going to cut a 1.5 snip in your seam allowance and sew at 1.5 and then press your fly to the front. Now you're going to roll the fly to the inside so that you can't see it from the right side. So I'm just going to pin it to show you. With top stitching thread, you're going to sew 
two millimeters from the edge. You will need to add and test the buttonholes in your button fly before you attach all of your fly together because you won't be able to get at that fly piece to add the buttonholes at a later date. You can use top stitching thread or your regular sewing machine thread. Top stitch and turn over so that you've got your fly facing up. Put your button fly right side onto the fly. Line up the folded edges and check that the curve at the bottom of the fly is all matched up. Next, sew a line along the edge of all of the fly layers. Now in the pattern it suggests to change the thread on your machine and do a contrasting machine tack along there but I'd been swapping between top stitching threads and sewing threads so I didn't want to change the colour again so I'm just putting a line of tacking in there making sure I'm doing a really clean tack around the curve to show the shape of the bottom of the fly. Next you can take the pins out and flip it over. Here's the stitching line that I will follow for top stitching. It's time now to bar tack at the end of your zip which stops the um, crotch seam from splitting open. You can do one or two. Um, I'm going to put one here. I've got a quite a neat finish there so I'm going to leave that and I'm going to use top stitching thread to bar tack at the bottom of the fly. So now the button fly is all complete. Jean's button comes in two parts. So there's the metal top. You can get different finishes depending on what colour top stitching thread you've chosen. And there's a little pin. So first of all, you need to mark your buttons. Now, you don't mark them in the middle. You mark them towards the outer edge because when you've got them on and they're under stress, that is where your button is going to be positioned. I've marked my buttonhole here. You can just give it a little bit of a hole start with the end of some pointy scissors or an awl. The little pin goes from the back through the hole. And your button goes on top. Once you've got your little pin through, you then need to be working on the reverse of the fabric. So the pin goes into the back of the button. And you use a hammer. To push the pin into back of the jeans button and on the dawn jeans the button is positioned quite uh, close to the edge of the extension you can carry on until you've got all of your buttons attached join the rest of the crotch with a regular stitch so just check out that you are meeting where you split your seam at the bottom of the fly and top stitch along the crotch seam there are lots of different pocket features on jeans. That's the bit that I really like, all that sort of small work under the machine. So we're going to look at how to construct the front pockets with the pocket bag and the coin uh, little inner pocket. And we're also going to look at how to put on the back pockets. Press down the edges of the coin pocket, one centimetre and then one centimetre on the top and also down the side. Put your two lines of top stitching across the top of your coin pocket, find the notches and match up the position of the pocket onto your main facing. You can pin that in place and then do your final edge stitch. Here's the pocket complete and you can also finish around the edge in your chosen way. Next, take the pocket bag and find the position for the pocket facing. And now you're going to put your pocket facing onto the bag, wrong side to wrong side. 
and sew all the way around the edges. And fold your pocket bags in half. It all feels a little bit counterintuitive because it feels like your fabric is the wrong way round. But um, you want to have your pocket bag so that the pattern is on the outside and the inside of the fabric is inside your pocket. Sew around the edge of the pocket. Clip the curves without going into the stitching of course and you need that pattern fabric to roll really well to the inside. You might want to pin it in place just to try and keep that fabric onto the wrong side. And you don't want to see the lining poking out. There we are, look. It's really nicely rolled to the inside. You top stitch the edge of the pockets with your two layers of top stitching and keep make sure that your pocket facing all stays inside your pocket. To finish off the pocket, you're going to sew along the bottom and also finish that edge. There's your pocket all finished. And now we're just going to tack down the sides. You can hand tack or machine tack. Also at the top. The more preparation you put into your back pockets, the better they will be. All the preparation makes for a really good pocket. If you just press under your edges and sew it on, then uh, you can get sort of your pocket a little bit twisted or not in the position that you want. So make sure you do all the prep. So you need to be doing the top stitching first because you can't top stitch it after you've attached it. Um, and so you top stitch first, then press under 1.5 seam allowance. And I'm going to just tack that in place so that I can take the pins out and then I can really concentrate on sewing carefully under the machine rather than trying to dodge pins. Okay. I've also done some pocket design um, here. I've used a Shishiko template and I've used top stitching thread to hand stitch a pattern on the pocket. So if you want to do anything now, machine stitching, top stitching thread, um, embroidery, floss embroidery, all of that is to do at this stage. Place your pockets all prepared into the pocket position. I've marked mine with a carbon wheel going to pin this in place and again as part of your preparation you could use a chalk pencil to mark where you're going to sew your top stitching especially in this corner so make sure that your both of your rows of top stitching have the corner apex in the same position so this requires two rows of top stitching Making jeans is a marathon, not a sprint, so it's time for a cup of tea and I will be back with part two. I will be back with part two where we look at the all of the waistband finishes, the yoke, the waistband and the leg finishes. In the meantime, head over to Minerva, take a look at some other jeans patterns and some fabrics that you might choose. There's a huge range of denim, there's cord, there's drill and there's canvas which will also make suitable jeans. We would love to see if you've made some jeans, so do open an account with us and share your makes so that we can see what you've been making and provide inspiration for the sewing community. Thank you very much for watching. See you in part two. Goodbye.